Hey everyone, today I'm going to be controlling a plant's movement with my brain. If you want to control some other living thing, you've got to use electricity. When you see the movement of a robot, it's easy to understand that a robot needs electricity to move. But surprisingly, you also need electricity to move. Robots use wires to control the flow of electricity to motors, but your body uses wires known as nerves to control the flow of electricity to your muscles. When you send an electrical signal down a wire, what's happening is an electromagnetic wave is going through the wire, and that travels at the speed of light in the metal. But in your body, you'll notice that your nerves aren't that fast. For example, let me trigger some of the nerves in my leg here. And you'll see that it's not immediate. The speed in which electrical signals transfer through your body is around 275 miles per hour. Now that's still extremely fast, but nothing compared to the speed of light. And the reason these electrical signals move so slow is because they rely on the actual movement of ions in your cells. Now these ions moving change the electrical potential down a cell. For example, in a neuron here, you can see that the potential changes propagating down the cell like this and the potential is changing because of the movement of ions across the cell membrane. This electrical signal moving across a cell is called an action potential. For example, if you hook electrodes to your chest, you can see the electrical signal of all your heart cells beating at the same time. These potentials that we can measure are called action potentials because they make us move. Now surprisingly enough, animals like us aren't the only thing that use these action potentials. There's actually some plants that use them too. For example, I have here a Venus flytrap. I have a positive electrode touching the side of the Venus flytrap, and then I have a negative electrode in the dirt. And then on the screen here, I'm showing the voltage between those two electrodes. But now watch what happens when I touch one of the hairs of the Venus flytrap. As soon as I touch it, you see an action potential signal go across the screen. When you move the hair of the Venus flytrap, it causes ions to flow, which builds up a voltage. And that voltage quickly goes up and then goes away. But if you touch a hair again, causing an action potential within around 20 to 30 seconds, then the Venus flytrap will close. So Venus flytraps use action potentials in order to close the Venus flytrap and catch flies. But the action potentials in Venus flytraps don't use muscles like we do in our bodies, but they actually use fluid pressure to close the trap. Venus flytraps aren't the only plant that use action potentials. For example, there's a plant called a sensitive mimosa, and they grow just on the side of the road in Asia. For example, here's some I found when I was in Cambodia. When you touch these plants, they go to sleep. Watch. There it goes. I have a sensitive mimosa here, so watch what happens if I just touch the leaf softly and don't trigger it. You can see that we don't measure an action potential. But if I knock it hard enough, it causes the leaf to go to sleep. And you can see the action potential there. So that means if we took a wire connecting the Venus flytrap to the sensitive mimosa and then triggered the Venus flytrap, we should be able to capture the voltage from the action potential of the Venus flytrap and transport it to the sensitive mimosa and get the sensitive mimosa to trigger just by touching the Venus flytrap. So what I'm going to do here is connect it so that the action potential of the Venus flytrap is going to be sent to the sensitive mimosa so that when I trigger the Venus flytrap, it's actually gonna trigger the sensitive mimosa instead. Okay, I'll zoom in on the Venus flytrap on the left here. Now watch when I touch one of its hairs. Whoa! So I didn't touch the sensitive mimosa at all. All I did was send the signal from the Venus flytrap to the sensitive mimosa. So in a way, these two plants are actually communicating with each other. The action potential from one is being sent to the other plant, causing movement. So if we can get two plants to communicate with each other, maybe I can communicate with the plant. So what I've done here is hook electrodes to my arm so that when I move my arm, it's gonna record that voltage and then transport it to the sensitive mimosa. So let's see if when I flex my arm, I can get movement out of the sensitive mimosa. Here we go. Whoa, it worked. It actually moved down when I tightened my arm. That is so cool. So this was really cool. Two plants with no brains can communicate with each other with electrical signals, and even me with a little bit of a brain, and a plant can communicate with each other as well, just through electricity. And I've even shown in a previous video that I can get another person to move just by tightening my arm by connecting the signal between my arm to theirs. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> so the tie that binds us all together is electricity. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. 
and you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And also check out my second channel, Action Lab Shorts, where I do videos similar to this channel, but they're much shorter, less than a minute. And check out the actionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet, and check out the Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.